Hey everybody, Mark from Northeast Bass Fishing. How you doing? Well, I want to have a discussion with you tonight. I do have a subscriber request on fall fishing techniques. And, you know, what are the five things that I like to use the most or or how many ever number that could be because, you know, the fall is kind of a tricky time of year. So, you know, every day is different. Um, but here's some of the things I thought I'd talk to you guys about that I always have tied on uh, this time of year in the fall as the water is finally... Uh, the weather has been so crazy, really warm for a while, now starting to cool down. So water temps, I'm um, in the Northeast, are, I would imagine, pretty consistently in the 50s right now. Um, <clears throat> the nights are colder, um, but now we do have another warm spell coming, so who knows uh, how long. Uh, I don't mind <laughs> that it stays warmer longer, but um, the water temps have not really drastically dropped uh, yet. Um I think last week fishing in Vermont, the coldest water was 58 degrees. So still pretty warm for this time of year. So, you know, fall fishing, water's starting to cool down. I always have on now, I have some spinning setups and I have some casting setups. So probably what I usually start with <clears throat> is some type of a Ned rig. And that is just a Robo Worm Ned, uh, that uh, Morning Dawn chartreuse color that I showed you guys the other day on that video that I, I just picked up a couple more bags of it. So <clears throat> I'm always gonna have the Ned on. I may even start with the Ned just to see what kind of a mood the fish are in. And you guys know that that, that Robo Worm Ned has been a real fish catcher for me this year. So whatever Ned bait you like, if you like the Z-Man, they're great. Um, everybody makes a Ned bait nowadays. So whatever you wanna use, they'll, they'll work. Um, I just have a lot of confidence in those Robo Worm ones. Now, <clears throat> on the Ned, it doesn't just have to be a Ned Worm. Another good option is something like this uh, this Hyper Spider from Kitech. Done very well with this lately. That's a good option. These crawfish style baits. The uh, little spider from Kitech is another good option. That's another bag of that Hyper Spider. Um, this gets it spider jig, this mini one. That new um, uh, Yamamoto 2.5 inch. Uh, that's out in the boat right now. I'd show that to you too. But anything like this, these small crayfish type baits are good on an, are are good on the net head. <clears throat> they all they all work. Cabin creeks are good. Something like that. I'm always going to have something like that on my spinning setups, and I think. That one was a Ned, and this other one is one of the baby spiders. So I'm always going to have those type of baits tied on this time of year, especially. Not that I don't throw a Ned all year long, but as far as being productive, I think that this time of year they really shine. So anything like that on a Ned head is good this time of year. Uh, let's see. Some type of a swim bait, like a Kitech. Now this is, I believe, a 3.8. Um, you could go to the 3.3 three size, like uh, <clears throat> like here's like that 3.8 that I just showed you guys. That on any whatever kind of swim bait head you like to use, the 3.3. Three. A lot of the bait is small this time of year. The 3.3 three is good, or you can even go down to that Kitech and that 2.8 inch size. And you can use a spark shad. <clears throat> I think I got something still hanging up here. The Hasdong Shad, Mega Bass is a good option if you want those small swim baits. The Spark Shad is a great option for Mega Bass. Whatever swim bait you like to use, they're all good. I always have a smaller swim bait tied on this time of year. <clears throat> because a lot, as I said, a lot of the bait is very small this time of year. And that's my 2.8 Kitex there in that box. Uh, let's see. Um, as far as... The only other really spinning setup I'm going to have tied on is a jerkbait. And the jerkbait was very good in Vermont last week. It was probably the bait I caught the most fish on. That's just a Mega Bass Vision 110. That's that Northern Secret color, which is a color I just got this year and I've been throwing it. It's been working very well, but I tend to stick with those perch patterns. You know, and it all, a lot of it will depend on the, you know, clarity of the water. I may go with the brighter colors if the water is cloudy. Uh, the water I was fishing with last week was very clear, so a bait like that really shined. 
but uh, whatever your color is that you have confidence in, I would definitely have some type of suspending jerk bait on. So as far as spinning setups go, a Ned setup with a Ned worm, a crawl bait of some type, Kitek, um, <clears throat> a little spider, something like that, that hyper spider, a finesse swim bait. A finesse swim bait is a good way to go this time of year. So I will definitely have those four things tied on. Um, as far as casting goes, now I usually start with all that spinning stuff. Um, it just seems when that water's colder, maybe the fish are a little more sluggish. Um, I want to start with that and just see the mood of the fish. Um, probably as far as my casting outfits go, the bait I'm going to start with is my football head jig. And that's the Beast Coast Open Water Sniper. It's a half ounce. I've talked about it a lot on my channel, and you guys know it's one of my favorites. Um, the only thing I could, I'm trying to think last week, I did throw it a decent amount. Northern Pike were the only ones that really were interested in it. But um, the open water sniper is a great option um, if you have another, you know, football head you like to use. But these are so finessey, I just think they shine. You know, they don't have a lot of, they don't have a lot of strands of, of, uh, of skirt on them. They look very natural in the water. A lot of great colors. So that's just one I like. Whatever, whatever football head jig you like. But I would definitely have a football head jig tied on uh, to drag the bottom. <clears throat> now, I also always have, though I may not throw it as much, I do always have one of my pitching and flipping jigs on. This is just that new Kitek jig that I've been throwing around lately. It was nice. <clears throat> I'm going to try this new Cumberland, the, uh, the Randy Blackett jig from Cumberland uh, Pro Lures. I'm going to try that too. This time you're with that, silic with that uh, rubber skirt. I want to throw that around next time I get out. But I always have a flipping jig tried, uh, tied on <clears throat> because when I come across, um, you know, shallow water cover like wood, docks, if people still have their pontoon boats in the water, they collect heat and they can sometimes collect, you know, fish will sometimes hang out there even this time of year. Um, <clears throat> I've found a lot of times in the fall, fish do seem to get attracted to the wood and they hang out on it. Um, any shoreline cover that, that can, um, you know, have some heat to it, you know, get some heat from the sun, like a rock or wood or docks or, you know, especially those metal pontoon boats, um, it's worth it taking a few throws just to see if the fish are there. Uh, no matter what time, just, I'm always, if I, if there's a lake that I'm fishing and it has wood cover, I'll always, you know, pitch my jig by just to see if there's anybody there. So I will always have a jig tied on, uh, a football head jig and a flipping and pitching jig. Um, I'll definitely always have <clears throat> a spinner bait tied on. Um, just because the fall, um, if you get the right conditions with the wind, you know, uh, the spinner bait sometimes is the best way to go. This is sometimes my most productive pattern in the fall. Um, I've had times fishing on the river where the Ned, which is usually great, or dragging a tube, which is great, not producing much, start throwing that spinner bait, start catching fish. So they're just, it's just the right thing at the right time. So I always have a spinner bait tied on. This just happens to be one of my old 38 specials from Strike King, which unfortunately they don't make anymore. Um, but whatever spinner bait you guys like, that spinner bait is a little light. Sometimes I actually like to throw a three quarter round spinner bait and get a little deeper, throw it a little farther. Um, so a spinner bait of your choice is another good option in the fall. And probably the last thing that I definitely always have tied on is some type of crankbait. Um, this happens to be, this is one of those, uh, those six cents 75 X's that I love. Flat sided crankbait, square bill. Um, I'll be throwing either a flat sided square build type crankbait. Um, here's my Mega Bass box. I have some different options. Um, I'll show you a couple here. If I can. But like that uh, square bill, that S crank from Strike King, whatever square bill you guys like to throw, but I like to throw a square bill. Um, I love the flat slap. Of course, they're all stuck together. So I can get a, oh, there's one that's not stuck on that little pile there. But the flat slap, <clears throat> I love this bait from Mega Bass. Great in the spring, great in the fall. You fish her around rock. 
I like to throw this parallel to like, if I've got a rocky shoreline, I like to throw this parallel to it and just work it through there. Um, that's a great option. Something like this, something like this Sonic slide. That's another square bill, flat-sided crankbait, which is good for mega bass. But like I said, whatever, I happen to have that six cents one tied on, whatever one you guys like. Um, I don't do as much deep cranking as I used to this time of year. Maybe I should try it just to see. I think that's kind of something that's kind of gone by the wayside. Um, but I'll also try throwing a trap. Um, I think I got all my rattle traps in the in the boat, but I like throwing the Spro um, uh, rattle trap. Any any you know lipless crankbait you guys like to throw. That's another option. If I'm going to actually you know even if I'm fishing a lake that has a lot of weeds, a lot of grass that still might be there, you can throw that and rip it out of it. Might get that reaction bite. So some type of a crankbait will probably be tied on. So really, you don't have to load up with a lot of different uh, rods. Um, I could get away with just those eight if I went fishing um, tomorrow, uh, this time of year. Because I'm gonna really be focusing on dragging the bottom with my Neds or you know my Kitex or whatever crawl bait I have on those Ned heads. Um, the other bait, the only bait that I didn't show you that I might, that I do throw sometimes is a tube. I like to drag a tube on the bottom. <clears throat> if those other things aren't working, I'll try that just because it's, it's a good option. Um, I don't really drop shot as much this time of the year even though I probably should, just to see. Um, maybe if those fish are holding off the bottom a little, it might be a good technique. And you know, with those max scent flatworms, that's, that's a good bait, you know, to get that scent in the water. Um, so I, that's something else, I guess I could put that on my honorable mention, a drop shot that I would probably throw in the boat, just to have it and see how it's going and uh, try it out. Um, Cause I think if they're, if they're eating the Ned or Ned style baits, the drop shot is also a good thing to throw in those at those same areas just to, to see if you can get some more bites but uh, but that's it guys i don't think you what's nice about this time of year is you don't have to go crazy with a lot of different you know baits um and for someone like me who puts way too much stuff in the boat <laughs> when i go fishing that i don't need um <clears throat> it's nice to go out there and just catch them on a couple things and not have to have you know tons of tackle in the boat so it is a good time to kind of uh you know keep the boat a little clear of clutter <laughs> from all the, you know, you know, because I when I go fishing, I want to try this, I want to try this, I want to try this, and and you, you only wind up doing half of them. Um, but really, you know, if if I was going to go out tomorrow, I would start with a Ned. I'd throw that around, see how the fish are reacting, try and get an idea of what uh, depth level they are at, um, and who knows? Um, sometimes they might, you know. Last week was a good example. There were lakes that we fished where the fish were seemed like they were very negative. They were very negative, they didn't want anything. And other lakes where they were acting like, wow, it's fall, I need to start eating and fatten up and they were had, had some fat guts on them. So every lake is different, every lake is different. You just have to see the mood of the fish on a particular lake you're fishing on. Um, but if you're prepared with those style baits, I think that you're probably do pretty well uh, this time of year. And as I said, the water is not really that cold yet. Um, I haven't, I don't, I think it's going to take a while for the water to get below 50, just, just based on looking at the weather. Um, but once we start getting these 30 degree nights, it'll, it'll slowly go down. But of course, then we get these sunny days. And, and if it's 70 again, I saw two days this week, it's going to be in the seventies again, the water will go back up a little bit again, but it's going to be teetering in that, that's that 50 range now for a while, you know, until the, until it really gets cold. And it doesn't warm that much up during the day. So then that'll be more of our winter season where, you know, I'll get into throwing blade baits and uh, and things like that. But I'm not ready for blade bait season quite yet. But that's kind of it, guys. That's pretty much how how I attack, uh, attack the lakes this time of year. You know, I may add in, if you guys, you know, you guys saw my video, I may try some of these new underspins just to see because I like to throw the swim baits. Maybe throw some of my ki my Kitex with some different underspins, see how they react to that. Um, but, you know, pretty much those basics that I talked about, you, you're pretty well off to uh, to go out there and go after some bass. So uh, that's kind of it for me. Now, if you guys have anything um, that you really like in the fall, share it with the group. You know, everybody always seems to have a great conversation in the comments. I always enjoy that. Um, but that's it, guys. That's it. So if you've got your you get your nids, you get your football heads, your regular jigs, some swim baits, some finessey swim baits, you're good to go.
you know, what couple crankbaits you like. Um, you know, it's a good time of year to catch some big fish. It's a good time of year to catch some big fish. And a lot of guys are out hunting now, so the lakes are pretty empty, which is nice too. So, so that's it. Um, if I think of anything else, maybe I'll do a part two, but I think I pretty much got, got, uh, got everything down here because I was taking stuff out of my boat from being away, taking it into the garage and then bringing it downstairs here to say, well, what am I gonna talk about in this video? Um, but I think those, if you go with those baits, those bait styles, you'll be in pretty good shape for fall fishing. And as I said, I'm in the Northeast and just of my experience of fishing in the Northeast all my life, um, that's kind of what works for me. All right, so uh, any questions, let me know. Um, I'm not necessarily gonna, I mean, I guess I could throw a few bait links in there, but you guys know where to get all this kind of stuff. Um, but, uh, but thanks for watching. Uh, please like and share the video. And if you guys are new to my channel, please subscribe. I'll see you guys soon on YouTube. Mark out.